how they divided that up. Yeah. All these people have died because of your economic existence, mm. or because of your greed, or your wanting to be wealthy, or because you want to be top dog, or you want to control things, or because your freaking economic substance is crippling Africa. That's how I would overthrow a government. That's more powerful than killing a few people, right? <laughs>who built the crystal palace his name was joseph oh and this is the pub named after him it's been here for like ever and i worked there you worked there i worked there i worked there yesterday did a shift oh whenever you please i have an arrangement They were mainly killing people, like thousands of people with machete. You think it's evil as this sort of like quite violent, like, um, I don't know, like act full of excitement and sort of fury. But I mean, think how many hours it must take to kill that many people. I mean, these guys had to stop to take breaks because their arms were starting to hurt just because the sheer like macheting people. Hours and hours, like grueling work. I mean, this isn't this sort of. You really have to commit to that kind of thing, and, and I think that's, I think that's evil because after a while you just you become numb to it. Don't you? I think part of being good is keeping yourself raw, you know, making yourself susceptible to pain. Well, if someone saved my life, I would hope they did it just because... Well, put it like this, if I saved someone's life, it wouldn't like I would turn around and say, Oh, I saved your life now, you have to give me a million pounds, or or you have to be my friend forever, or you have to say my name 50 times every second Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't, would you? You'd just save their lives. with mm -hmm. Edgar, um, and what he does is he puts on these sun goggles, and he goes down to this park, this park that's near us, and he, and he walks around this war memorial that's out there in the park, and, and it's kind of in this circle of trees, so like the first time he just said he felt he had to walk around it, because it was inside this sort of circle, or this square of trees, and, and then, uh, but now, but then, uh, you know, Edgar uh, started to uh, get to walk him down there, like, almost every day. And he, and he just circle, continuously circle, circle, circle the war memorial for maybe half an hour and then go 
home and he said he thought that he, he just started to imagine somehow that if he would walk around the war memorial enough, just that one war memorial, he would he was going to create a vortex where where war would just be um, sort of at that particular point if he, he would walk around oh I'm sorry he'd walk around the memorial and he and he'd try and forget that it was there right um, and so he was by doing that he was he was going to somehow create this vortex or this uh, whirlpool in time and space and and he would through that one little point he would suck the existence of war out of time and space entirely and um, and thereby bring about world peace. So, yeah, for a while, Edgar was thinking he could somehow do that. Mm, don't talk to me in any literal sense now. Growing up, my parents told me that God loved me. And if you're told someone loves you, I think you're, maybe your natural reaction is to, to want to love them back, I suppose. And I think that's probably where it started with me, but in a philosophical sense, I mean, why do you believe your mother or your father or your sister or your brother loves you? You don't, you don't know, I mean, you can't. You can't prove it or categorize it, I suppose, but you, you just know. Well, how do you know you love anything? If you love someone and they don't even know you or notice, you still love them, right? I don't know. Collect my thoughts. Come on here, Flo. Wait for a car to collect you. Collect my thoughts again. Why should artists, you should very well know differently, always speak about such an ideal love? When I was at my first primary school, I went to a few primary schools for uh, for, for various different reasons, and um, I, had, I had this boyfriend. I think I must have been seven, and I think we'd just come back from America. We we stayed in America for a bit. I think I'd just come home, and I had this little boyfriend called Darren. No one lies. I said again, ask the same question of God or whoever. No answer like there was before. Nothing felt. He just sat there waiting, wondering. So every word that leaks from the pen is old news. No longer any happiness. Everything just simply becomes realistic. Collect my thoughts. Isn't being realistic a lousy cross to have to come around to bearing? <laughs> 